hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name's jason newland this is let me bore you to sleep and today is sunday newspapers sunday 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 newspapers see i'd like a little a little jingle before each uh, podcast episode. I hope you appreciate that. I spent a long time recording that. Um, I'm hoping that Vinny manages to keep quiet because there's a dog downstairs that's just screaming. It's basically, I guess it wants to, he's been left alone for a little while, which is a bit like what Vinny does. And he's really making, he's a puppy and he's making so much noise. Um, it's high pitched. It doesn't actually affect me personally because it's not that loud. But Vinny can hear it. And he can really hear it. And he now he knows who it is because he's met the dog. And it's uh, a little dog that lives downstairs. It's a little now but it's going to be huge apparently. But it's a puppy and beautiful beautiful little boy honestly he's so cute and so soft but also really uh, full of energy like puppies are and he Vinny was barking at him like growling at him because he kept he kept jumping on on Vinny he's bigger than Vinny and he's a puppy he's bigger <laughs> He's yeah, he's quite a bit bigger. Not not a huge amount bigger, but bigger. And Vinny didn't like it. And I think uh Vin thought he was the boss. You know, he should be the boss and downstairs used to be his place because my friend lived in that flat, so that was his his domain as it were, like up here. In fact he knew downstairs before he came up here. He'd been in there a few times. So to come, you know, when he goes down there, he thinks it's still his place. But it isn't, is it, Vinny? No. Now he's uh, he's just listening. You can see his ears flapping. <laughs> oh, dear. So uh, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes, if I haven't already said that. Vinny's coming in for the cuddle now, so he's going to... He's going to back up and cuddle into my body. Yeah. Unless you're going to bark. Now, I won't edit that little bark out, but if you do start barking, Vin, I'm going to have to put you in a bedroom. I won't have any choice. Because it's taken me way too long to edit these recordings these days. These recordings, these days, these, these, these constantly having to listen through to see if he's barking and try not to miss it out and it because of the recordings are quite long as well for some reason I seem to have uh, I seem to be making longer recordings over time I mean the way it's going I reckon in a year's time I'll be doing like I'll be doing 10 hour recordings without even having had to add anything on just me talking for 10 hours which will be too long and impossible to edit just impossible <laughs> it just yeah so anyway what's happened not a lot I woke up today I woke up very early Vinny was being a little bit uh restless again I think it's because of the dog downstairs so he's kind of a little bit on edge which puts me a little bit on edge and I woke up very early so I I got up and I thought uh, I might as well just get up I got up but then decided to get up you know I mean I, I got up did a woo 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 wee wee and then I thought hmm What's the point in going back to bed when I'm just going to be laying there? This is this pointless. 
So I went and did the editing. I was half falling asleep while I was doing that. And all the stuff that goes with that. And then eventually I did go back to bed for an hour or two afterwards. And uh, I'm feeling quite hungry, if I'm honest. You know, I don't like to be honest, but I'm feeling quite hungry. But yeah, it was it's alright. So I got it done and uploaded it made the 10 hour version of the video so I'll tell you about that so the new thing that I'm doing is I am making so I make the normal recording and still doing the one with music 5 hours and 10 hours available on the, on the podcast and then I create a video a 10 hour video without any music on YouTube I post that on to takes a while to upload and to produce and all that stuff it takes a couple of hours two or three hours from start to finish but then I it's 10 hours long you know so it's it's quite a, takes quite a lot of energy from the computer and the internet so then I create a page on my website specifically for the new recording and I embed an audio player and a video player or an audio that you can listen to stream and a video you can watch which is the one that's on YouTube and then I upload the all four recordings so that you can download them for free on that page or from that page I then embed the on my first page if the, the front page of the website you know just the home page there is was of the first the most latest video and the latest audio and there's a list again like a little playlist of the latest ones so that that's quite cool so I've got that on there it, it's quite a time consuming to get it all updated every day I got one thing on automatic but the video couldn't really find a way to do YouTube automatically to to embed the latest YouTube video and there, there is a way probably well, there must be a way but it's a little bit too technical for moi so I might look into it in the future because it would definitely be good to get as much automated as possible but the the actual latest audio recording because I've got a playlist it just automatically updates it whenever I upload a new one so that's good and what else that's it really I've got my Facebook group Jason Newland's boring group so you can join that if you're a super fan and yeah oh man it was proper raining today I went out this morning and I took him out and we we're gonna go we we're gonna you know go for a thingy that I won't say out loud too much rain so we went into the garden and I stood under the tree and I was begging him to do a wee wee Please, please, please do a wee 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 wee. Please. Eventually, he did something, and then we went back inside. I just didn't. I didn't fancy getting soaked through. It just wasn't. Didn't really appeal to me for some reason. And then we waited till I think it was gone four o'clock, and we went out for a walk. We had a proper walk this time and it wasn't raining it was a little bit musty you know that musty rain where it's not really raining but it's kind of musty kind of is raining but it's not really but it's almost like it's just the rain is just static in the air when you walk through it blimey that's a toilet downstairs that made a lot of noise 
so yeah I went out but it did it kind of cleared up once I was out and then oh itchy ear oh, oh. and then we came back yeah and I spent most of the day working on the YouTube channel posting links to the website the individual website pages for example I haven't done today's one yet wow that's a good point so if you click on a on one of the YouTube videos one of the more later ones you'll see in fact any of the let me boy to sleep apart from today's but that should be done not today's yesterday's yeah like the Saturday's magazines that one so the first right at the top of the description there it says download all four versions of this mp3 uh, free or something and then there's a link to the page so that's something I do for every new page every new video as well links to the new page so yes yeah, it's, it's a it's a quite a lot to do I'm I've done all the let me boy to sleep ones I'm now doing the relax and sleep hypnosis daily ones and I'm about 130 in of about 220 or 209 I think maybe and then I'll do all the others so that's going to take the rest of the week probably but I have to be careful because I am I'm not ignoring but I'm kind of not focusing on the university course which I should be because it started officially yesterday although there was a week previous that was part of the course as well which I haven't done but I've not even started so I need to what I'm going to do tomorrow and actually get on it and then every day of the week weekdays I'm going to maybe try and do it so it's 16 hours a week 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, so 5 days, 3 hours is 15 hours, so one hour divided into five, what's that? Two, four, six, no. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, 10 minutes. And it's about three hours and 10 minutes. Two, four, six, eight, two, uh, yeah, okay. Three hours and 12 minutes is, no. Yeah, two, four, six, eight, yeah. Three hours and 12 minutes. It's a bit specific, isn't it? Per day. Three hours. That seems like a lot. It doesn't it seem like a lot? Three hours. Well, I probably spend more. I do spend more than that doing these podcasts. But. Yeah, so I, I need to. Take. Uh, be a little bit more. Try and be a bit more organised. So I've got a uh, kind of a routine for the podcasts. You know, I make the recording in the afternoon or early evening. It's now currently 23 minutes past 6 p.m. And I will so have this done by whatever time I get this finished and then I'll then I'll turn everything off and I will upload first thing in the morning and process and all that stuff edits and all everything 
so yeah that's kind of my lot of routine because there used to be a time when I would make a recording and then I'd edit straight away and process and upload and because I knew of all the work that was to be done it almost put me off wanting to make a recording because I knew it was going to be the next maybe three, four, four hours, five hours even before it's all done and I thought nah but this is a bit easier because I separate the two things you know recording and then the editing separate different day it's just nice to have that break from it other than the fact well I can't remember what I talked about the day before so thank you to Cara for your lovely words about one of my recordings right Vinny started barking but to be fair there was a lot of noise outside as well so he didn't have a lot of choice really didn't have much choice you gonna lay down give me cuddles come on baby get cuddles give me cuddles come on good boy that's it cuddle no he's not fair enough so today we are doing the Sunday papers and I'll try and look through some different papers because there's quite a few to go through. Daily Mirror. What? Retros. Wow. Here's one. This is the retro. Daily Mirror Readly Retros. This is from uh, Wednesday, October the 2nd, 1974. Blimey. I wonder if it's going to go through. Oh, it's not. Oh, it is. The cost of keeping quiet. Wow. Nixon's men go on trial. A pat on the back for Britain. New motor, tr new motor strike chaos. It's 14,000. Um, the weather. 13 degrees. Uh, 30, 55, 55, 59. 54, 56, 54, 57. No, 13. 50, wait a minute. 13 degrees. So, sorry, that's it. 55 is like, that'd be 100 Fahrenheit. So, centigrade, 13, 13, 15, 12. So, it's raging around like the 14, 14, 13. Uh, centigrade which is about normal this time of year I don't know what it is now huh. secret of the back row boys the smiling boy in the back row did not reveal his identity during a three week holiday visit to a French school Andrew oh dear oh, no not all dear no 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 I'm just this this the current the he was introduced simply as a son of a landowner and a non-working mother and he went on famous so the secret only came out when he returned to England the, the non-working mother was the Queen and the boy was Prince Andrew so he went on a school trip this is 1974 this time 1974 Prince Andrew went on a school trip and yeah he was keeping secrets back then um, and uh, his soccer playing prince was in a party from the school parties he also scored in the classroom a new spokesman said yesterday he also scored in the, the classroom what does that mean andrew's a bright student and certainly plays a jolly good game of football very few people knew who he was we had to be discreet for security reasons but naturally the family he stayed with were informed. You'd think so, wouldn't you? 
<laughs> yeah, Andrew's trip was part of an annual anal annual exchange visit. Ah. Oh, is is this weird? This is really strange looking at old newspapers. I like this. So this is the the Daily Mirror. 1974 October the 2nd so up goes sugar Tate and Lyle I was two years old no I was 19 I was four years old up Tate and Lyle the Mr. Cube giant is putting up the price of sugar by one and a half pence for a two ib bag one and a half pence or two. The rise, the second this year, will increase the average price in the shops to about 14 and a half pence. 14 and a half pence for a bag of sugar. That's just ridiculous. It's not a huge amount now, really. If you go to like a supermarket, you probably get, a, mind you, two pound, no. Yeah, that's for a big bag. The little bag, yeah, so it's probably a couple of quid for the big bag, big bags now. Two pounds. Or is it a kilo? Do you get kilo sugar? I'm not sure. It is caused by a high refining higher refining costs and by higher prices which Tate and Lyle had to pay during a sugar shortage sugar shortage for supplies from countries they do not usually deal with. Britain's big three bakers have asked the Price Commission to approve a half a pence rise on a loaf of bread. As weird, bakers have to ask whether to put up the price of bread. Shouldn't it be up to them how much they charge for bread? Ah, oh. didn't know that. Uh, da, 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 da. So what else? What have we got? Healy takes US by storm. Dennis Healy gets off a British Airways flight in London this morning. He would still be switched from. The, oh, okay. I don't know what it's about. Page three. Oh, the Daily Mirror has a different page three. It usually has a a model on there. Britain wants a vote on Europe. <laughs> wow. So, most people want the right to decide whether Britain stays in the common market, Mr. Wilson said last night. So, I'm guessing Mr. Wilson was the Prime Minister at the time. But only Labour would give them that chance, said the Prime Minister. He supported his claim that people of all parties wanted a market vote by quoting figures Oh, blimey. So, there's a big advert for cigarettes. Blimey. 36 pence. Wow. Bad word in here. Right? This is guards. This is like literally a genuine cigarette advert. Guards, king size, 34 pence. Two pence less than other king size. So it's 30, so it's, yeah, only 34 pence, not 36 for 20. So it's 36 pence for 20 would be the average price for 20 cigarettes back then. It's now 20 pound. If that was the case, if sugar went up the same price, then a bag of sugar would now be... Wow, I can't even work it out. Twenty pound. How many thousands of percentage has that gone up? Blimey! But that is it's a really bad. This is this they've, they've got a big headline, which is not a good headline. Bearing you know, it says cut your smoking costs at a stroke. It's like, no, that's bad wording. Bad wording. 
but this is back in the 70s they they weren't i think i think even doctors used to smoke in the surgeries back then labor peril by heath god it's the same thing it's exactly the same as it is now the newspapers just constantly picking on the politicians like all the time all the time Oh, look at this. There's an advert here for a Mazda. Okay, here we go. This car was made for a small, overpopulated island where petrol is expensive and repair bills high. It could do well in Britain too. Wow. That's a bit of a controversial uh, thing, isn't it? Car was made for a small, overpopulated island where petrol is expensive and repair bills are high so obviously that's where they were back then overpopulated in 1974 what are we now blimey so yeah that was a bit controversial wasn't it i mean can you imagine they do an advert like that now it's for a car if you think things are pretty tough over here you should drive a car in japan they got less room higher bills no north sea oil to look forward to so if the mazda 100,000 rubber can make it go of it where it's really tough it ought to thrive in britain for a start it was built to be right hand drive so there's none of the conversion problems you get with some foreign cars <laughs> Girl, i love this. this is funny wow and it's got in brackets like the passenger getting more of, of his windscreen wiped than the driver yeah i guess blimey like us, most of their driving is done in the city streets. So the Mazda 1000 has a turning circle of only 27. I don't know what that means. And if you can leave a car out all night in Tokyo, Laverage... Laverage? Oh, it's not, it's brackets. Average annual rain 66. You won't have too much trouble in a sunny place like Manchester... Average rain for 33. Sunny. Did the, I mean, I've never known this country to be described as sunny, ever. Because, but I remember my memory of the 70s was, it was sunnier. It, you know, that's my the like summers were sunny and hot really hot and yeah just the memory i suppose isn't it wow this is a re this is like a proper big page and I'm expecting people to read it all as for petrol consumption you can expect to up to 45 mpg well, miles per gallon on the cheapest two-star variety the 985 cc overhead cam engine has an alloy head and a top speed of over 80 <sighs> wow but the biggest thing that makes it a success in japan also seems to be its biggest attraction over here it's a lot of a car it's a lot of car for the money at £1,079. £1,079 for a brand new car. Yeah, well, it's a while back, isn't it? You get two speed wipers as well. <sighs> oh, if you'd like more power or more room, there's a 1300cc version and an estate car but we'd advise you make up your mind soon one thing japan and britain have in common is price rises and our next one is due this autumn that's the budget time which is coming soon here and it's like really weird how how kind of political politically integrated that advert was marge proops Ah, uh, 
Right. No wonder there's a bunny shortage. So this is one of the, this is like the agony, agony thingy. It came as no surprise to me to learn of the problems the Playboy Club is facing in recruiting bunny girls. 1974, everyone. Wages are high, fringe benefits attractive, but girls are certainly not flocking to become glorified waitresses in black tights and fluffy little towels on their bottoms. So, so desperate is the bunny shortage that their recruiting officer hoped to scout around the top girls' schools. What? Are you, are you serious? Right, here we go. So, so desperate is the bunny shortage that their recruiting officer hoped to scout around the top girls' schools in the hope of finding possible talent among the hockey and lacrosse set. Wow. Can you imagine that now? But the headmistress of the three top snob schools have given a cool turn down to the suggestion that this particular career is one of the people <laughs> that they, that this particular career is one their people should pursue. I would have been amazed if any sensible headmistress felt there was worthwhile job potential in being a bunny. It's hardly a career. Uh, a responsible teacher would recommend. So the fact that there's no rush of applicants indicates to me that more and more girls are becoming disenchanted with the idea of earning a living as sex symbols. Okay, the men who enjoy the services of buddies and presumably get a great kick out of being served their soup by a girl who's bosom is spoiling over her tight corset top, I reckon can blame the shortage on the women's lib movement. So this is an agony on this is this is this is her her comment on this. So she's blaming the women's lib uh, not even girls that claim they scorn the militant antics of the liberals, libbers are more influenced by them than they imagine. The number of girls prepared to subordinate themselves wearing that ludicrous outdated gear in order to serve food and drink to goggle-eyed, tired businessmen is decreasing. And quite rightly too, the, sorted, the shortage of bunnies is one more demonstration of the fact that the exploited sex symbol is on the way out. I join the liberals in shouting hooray. Um, wow. So that's from 1974. What are you doing Vinny? I can't believe he just can't behave himself. Look at this for an advert. A free stretch cover when you send for a free blog brochure. For the next 14 days only, when you send for the Plums stretch cover brochure, we will also you will also receive absolutely free of charge and without obligation a dining chair cover. Judge for yourself the superb quality and value for money. Machine washable, drip dry, colour fast, hard wearing, double stretch fabric. A perfect fit every time. I don't even know what that is, but it's £1.50. Only £1.50. But it says a free. You get, so you get it free. So what? what is £1.50? It's a dining chair cover. But it says you send, you're, you're also... You s oh, you receive it free of charge and without a obligation. Okay, so they'll send you it, but you do still need to pay for it. 
or send it back. Wow. Oh, a big freeze on love. What's this one? Dear Marge. Or Margie. Marge. My boyfriend is very loving and demonstrative in public. But as soon as we're alone, he freezes. Get a warmer flat. On buses, in the street, at parties, or when he comes to our house, he's forever cuddling and kissing me. All my friends think I'm very lucky to have a boy who is so loving. But when my parents go out and we're alone in the house, he doesn't even sit next to me. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's usually the other way around, isn't it? It's like, maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't like to broach the subject with him because I'm crazy about him and I don't want to lose him why do you think the, he acts this way and is there anything I can do I am 18 and he is 23 and we have been going steady for 7 months so Margie answers I haven't a clue <laughs> I really <laughs> Why would you post... I mean, she must have got like thousands of letters a week. Why would she post one that she doesn't got an answer for? Why would she... Uh, I haven't got a clue why your boyfriend freezes when you're alone. I could make a guess or two. He could be one of those males who intends to wait for the honeymoon before making you his very own in the fullest sense of the world. Word, rather. And know that once he starts something, it's very difficult to stop. He could be maintaining strict self-discipline so as not to be tempted. Or it could simply be that he regards you as a nice cuddly girlfriend but not as a future mate and doesn't want to get deeply involved with you. Ooh, but my guess is as good as yours and the only way to find out is to ask him. Now wait a minute, I'm not writing to you for your guess to be as good as mine. Otherwise there's no point in me writing to you, is there? Marge, what was what was the point? Marge, I mean, I just give. You have to be careful, though, how you tackle this delicate subject. You don't want to start him questioning your motives and priorities. Really? Still, I think that if it's going to turn into a serious relationship, with marriage as the ultimate goal for you both, the time must come when it's a good idea to have a sensible talk and decide that the time has come to come. But ru don't rush it. Wait until there's some clarification about the future. It would be foolish to get as far as calling the... Calling them what? The band, bananas. Calling the bands before trying to discover whether or not you're going to have a fulfilled and well-balanced life together. I don't know what that means. You could, not the last bit, have fulfilled and well-balanced life together. I understand that. I understand the concept at least. But what is, as far as, as far as calling the bands? I don't know what that means. You can afford to be patient for time, will tell if he wants you for a casual girlfriend or a future wife. I wonder what happened. I mean, she was 18 when I was four. So she'll be like in her early 70s now. So I wonder how it worked out for her. She'll be 72. What was her name? Didn't say. This is she conned him. Um, she conned him into marriage dear Marge this is that's the headline for it it's a different one dear Marge I suppose I committed just about the worst possible crime to get my man to marry me I don't think it's going to be the worst possible crime maybe in 74 it was we'd been going together for a year and he 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 was very reluctant it's quite difficult to read it because the um, well because I struggle to read. Was, was, um, don't judge me. 
uh, we'd been going together for a year and he was very reluctant to get married so I deliberately became pregnant Ooh. I mean it's not a crime but it's it's I don't know it's something that I don't know if people still do these days can, can people still get pregnant these days I don't know We'd been, uh, I deceived him into thinking I was safe but I knew he'd marry me if he was expecting a baby and we got married two months before our daughter was born but now I'm terribly unhappy I know he doesn't really love me and although he's fond of the baby fond of the baby <laughs> fond <laughs> uh, how can you be yeah how do you feel about your your little baby i'm fond i'm fond of him <laughs> yeah, like him as a friend i mean yeah he's all right i'm fond i mean you love a baby you love the baby don't you like oh he's fond of him he cares a little bit about him fond strange word um Okay, we we uh, okay. I know he doesn't really love me, and although he's fond of the baby and is a good father, sometimes the look of dislike I see in his eyes when he glances. <laughs> wow, I'm sorry, it's not funny. It just it's what a situation. Um, the dislike I see in his eyes when he glances at me. Okay. I'm sure he suspects the truth. Well, just don't tell him. There's no reason to tell him, unless you told everyone else, and now they're all keeping secrets for you. As long as it's his kid, then the rest is just, it's happened. It's got to move on, isn't it? That's my, that would be my advice. Um, it's a little bit late to be fair because it's 50 50 years too late but you know but ultimately just just you know stay or don't but you know he's still going to be the father but anyway uh, I know he doesn't uh, be, 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 be. SEX is almost non-existent but what can I do? Should I confess in the hope that he'll understand I did it because I loved and needed him so? Okay, right. I'd say no. That's just kind of like what, what good can come from it, basically, in that situation. I don't see any anything that could come from that other than... I suppose it could ease her conscience. But, I mean, it's obviously not a nice thing to do, but, you know... I've had a, I had a pregnancy once. Well, there was I, well, actually it was it was um, it was a false, false alarm. It's a, you know it was a false alarm which was um, yeah. It's weird. So what's the next one? Oh yeah, she says confessions are not always wise, but I think in your case it might be the only way. What? So she's advising her to confess. Oh, it was constipation. <laughs> um, it's taking a gamble though, and you ought to know the odds before you admit to your husband that you trapped him into marriage. It's yeah, I mean. Those are the days when getting married was kind of the the norm, wasn't it? People was used to get married very early. Well, it wasn't early to them, but getting married at eighteen was quite a normal kind of thing in the sixties and seventies and stuff. Well, it still is. It still can be. There's no as long as I think you have to be eighteen to get married now, or is it sixteen in this country? I think it's 16 here. Um, but 
Imagine the anger. 16, that's... No, different law, different country. Move on. <laughs> Blimey. We've got different laws. It's like, we don't have to wait till we're 21 to drink alcohol here. I mean, blimey. How we... uh, very strange. Strange laws that people have in different countries. I find that whole having to wait. Because, you know, people come over here. People come over here. Americans come here. And I don't think they can believe that they can drink alcohol in public at 18 without any kind of repercussion it's like wow but in the same way you know it is illegal if you go to if you're if you're dating someone that's still married they might be separate but they're still married and you go on holiday with them together and you stay in a hotel room in certain countries you go to prison for that so you know it's, it's different different rules isn't it and it wasn't a huge I mean I suppose the the gas build up was quite you know I did put a bit of weight on my belly was expanding no one could really blame me for thinking it was a baby but so she's saying oh you should take a gamble if you're so sure he knows anyway telling him won't be giving any finney's just done a smelliest guff oh and in confession you won't confer ever blimey that's a bit ugh, i don't know stinker of the week i nominate my i nominate my wife's best friend as stinker of the week she is wow <laughs> this gives you it's the sign of the times she is separated from her husband is now on and is now on a hunt for another man <gasps> no she doesn't want to be happy does she how dare her wanting to be happy have a happy life so she picked on me but because i love my wife i ignored her suggestion behavior Okay, she's trying to get other men that are married. Okay, that's probably a little bit different. I ignored her suggestions, behaviour, suggested behaviour. She then told my wife that I had made a pass at her and even reported actual words I'd allegedly said. Wow, yep, stinker of the week she is. That's uh, it's not good. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Right, okay, let's have a look what's next. Don't look now. Portugal takes a turn to the left. Oh, the left. The left is tightening its grip on Portugal. So that's the left rather than the right. Uh, pampered life of the pimps. What? The, the vice kings of Soho were kept in luxury by their girls, a jury heard yesterday. They cashed in on inflated rents and the girls' earnings. And it was alleged the ladies competed to see who could buy their bosses the best presents. Why? Story of the high life pimps was told at the Old Bailey Vice trial. A dark haired lady, identified as Miss G Spot, claimed that she paid a hundred pound a week rent to one of the accused hundred pound that's a lot of money a hundred pound when you think about it every two weeks you could buy a new car every ten weeks you could buy a new car so a hundred pound is a lot of money for rent back then a lot of money I mean, if you imagine paying and a pack of cigarettes was 34 pence a hundred pound for rent wow this is up to 
this is really weird okay so this is a big crime syndicate yeah they are said to have earned up to six hundred pound a week Let's see yeah um That's the, the girl. Well, that is that is a lot of money back then, blimey. That's quite a lot of money now, to be fair, for me. The cost of reliant shitter, shmint, 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 shintma, shintma, the car owned by Princess Anne, went up from 3,012 to 3,194 yesterday when the company increased its prices by an average of 7%. The price of a standard Reliant Robin saloon goes up by sixty-five to nine to nine hundred and ninety-two. That's really weird. It's almost like they because did they put I guess must have put the interest rate or the prices up on cars or I don't know. It just seems weird that they knew the prices of cars. I don't know the prices of cars. Look, take cover, it's a bargain. Do, 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 do. Like many other motorists, this is an advertisement. Like many other motorists, I have problems with my car seat. In winter, it's too cold and clammy. In summer, it's too hot and frisky. I'm sticky. The solution, I find, lies in a Guardian sheepskin type seat cover. It's warm in the winter cool in the summer and it helps beyond that I found it excellent too for preventing trouser shine trouser shine what's trouser <laughs> what's trouser shine it washes marvellously easily its usual price is five pound and twenty pence but readers get it for just three pound and thirty pence plus thirty five pence for packing and postage. Send off today. Blimey. You know what? I just remembered. I can't can I because uh, it's fifty years ago. Okay. Plus, I don't have a car. Yeah. Well, look, up to 800 green shield stamps free when you buy Woman. It's a magazine. Wow. There's got a, there's a picture, two pictures of magazines, and there's a picture of a lady with her head sticking out of a green shield stamp. Oh. I'm not sure what green shield stamps are. Don't bodge it. This is another headline now. The bonus system in industry and government departments is making us a nation of bodgers. There's only one way to do a job and that is properly. But bonus schemes encourage workers to cut corners to get more money. If we did away with the army of so-called time study experts we could afford to let men take more time doing their work well oh this is public opinion this is people sending in their letters their personal opinions so the next one's about parole I'm horrified by the news that more ok I'm not going to read that one Um I biting biting I dislike Jeremy Thorpe for setting like I can't read that I just literally can't read it it's too too um, out of focus right so this is the laugh laughter little cartoon it says two policemen holding the hat like crossed arms all right you can let go now we're off duty I really don't know what that I don't know 
Oh, I think it's because of all the the strikes and they were kind of so used to help to linking hands to stop rioting and stuff. So here are some more cartoons. So there's a man sitting there. There must be some food around. So what is this? So there. That's not a bad joke, actually. So two blokes on a desert island. Vultures surrounding them. And they've got no food. And one of them says, there must be some food around. After all, they have to eat too. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny. Can't find you... Can't you forget you're a traffic warden? There's a bloke watching TV with a sign, no parking in the car. A couple of... I don't know, I can't. I can't see them too small. So what's this? Cold shoulder for the temp. Miss Smiths. So, da -da 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 -da, take a cold shoulder, Miss Smith. Presenting the self point of new artist by Tommy Steele. Tommy Steele's dazzling career took a new turn yesterday when he's launched and he, he is launching as a part painter and one man show at a Mayfair gallery. So Tommy Steele was a celebrity, he used to be um he used to do singing and stuff, I think. Uh, do, 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 do. 55 councillors think they have found a sure way fire to save the ratepayers cash they want 23 of them what 55 councillors think they have found a sure fire way to save the ratepayers cash they want 23 of them to be sacked the members of the Ashfield Council in Nottinghamshire have asked the Boundaries Commission to cut the number of councillors to 32. The Chief Executive Officer, Mr Stoney Beedham, said yesterday, the members have found that a council of 55 for the area is unwieldy. If the council is cut down, savings will be considerable. The number of seats will be cut just because the next council election just before the next council election, if the commission agrees. Okay, right, let's get this into perspective. So there's 55 councillors. They all got together to figure out how to save money. And they, just, they decided that 23 of them should be sacked. How do you even... How? And you know that everyone that, that voted that, that agreed with that, were very much probably thinking that it's going to be someone else. It'll be someone else, they won't get rid of me. I've been here for years. How did only... Uh, da, 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 da. The only bar in Ville Longu near Lourdes has been closed because it was closer to the local Catholic Church than French law permits. Don't they, don't they drink wine in uh, church? It's a lockout by Len the caretaker. Okay, so what is this? Caretaker Len Woodall went on strike yesterday and locked 200 pupils and their teachers out of school. Mr Woodall was ordered by his union, the National Union of Public Employees, to lock the gates and turn off the gas and electricity. Mr Woodall, caretaker of the East Sheen Primary School at Mort Lake, said, I hate to do this to the children. I feel rotten. Um, more than 60 schools were affected by the dispute over payments of a new London allowance. But last night the dispute was settled and Noop, a spokesman, said, Everything will be back to normal. Yes, sir. So there was a lot of striking back then. A lot. It was like constant. I tell you, if you ever... Um, there's a movie called carry on at your convenience 
it was a carry on movie and it's like comedy it's an old comedy but it it's really making fun of the the how things were back then like constantly strikes 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 constantly so it's it's kind of funny because that is actually what was going on at the time when they made it so it's a very um very good political commentary i guess uh da, 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 da was missing okay hands up all those okay i've read that one uh okay augustus barnett's october scotch prices wow this is these ain't cheap really when you think about well i suppose i mean Scotch whiskey, two pound forty eight. Johnny Walker's, two pound forty nine. The thing is, all prices inclusive of eight percent VAT. Teachers, Bell's was two pound fifty nine for a bottle. Wow. So this is Augustus Barnett's, two pound forty nine. So I suppose, I mean, a bottle now would probably be 10 times that, probably. Yeah, so I don't know, just, it seems like quite a lot for those days, but maybe not. These people keep your food bills down. Three, oh, look at this, three pence off computers. Well, not quite, but Peter Kempton, our data processing manager, uses modern computer techniques which help us to sell your crisp crackers a little cheaper. Uh, a whole lot of other foodstuffs too. Remember, Peter is just one of the many people helping to save you money at Safeway. Ah, oh, so it's an advert for Safeway supermarket. Souk is this here. Supermarkets. Safeway supermarkets of the 70s. If you think a supermarket is just shelves of merchandise, think again. Ooh. So, oh, look at this. So, this month's, this month's £75,000 winner number picked by Ernie the Premium Bonds Draw Machine is 1FF589349. The winner lives in North Humberside. The 25,000 winner number is SPL 592913. He lives, this person lives in Devon. The 5,000 and 1,000 winner numbers are, oh, it's not showing anything. Oh, blimey. There's quite a few there. There's one, two, three. That's a lot. So, you know, some people would just be buying this paper just for that. Just so they could see whether or not their, the premium bonds draw came in. I wonder if they still do it. Look at this. Where to see Schreiber furniture when the shops are shut? What? In comfortable sitting rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, kitchens and in the Schreiber leaflets. Send to Schreiber Furniture, Hodderson, whatever. Uh, a folder holding leaflets. What? A fold showing all the range from Britain's furniture maker. Send. I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. You'll also be sent the names and addresses of Schreiber Furniture Centres. The specially selected shops which now show you practically everything Schreiber makes and which can usually let you have your order within 28 days, sometimes even less. What's that got to do? All oh, right, I suppose you can see the Schreiber furniture because it's on a leaflet. Rob, well, that's what they mean by when it's shut. Okay, okay. Oh, look, 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 look at this. Enjoy your colour TV. Free home trial. But run your beady eye over who's renting. Ooh. 
they'll run theirs over yours. They want to know you're reliable before leaving a £250 set in your living room. It's the same for you. The law says you have to pay 10 months money in advance, whoever you're renting from, and your set will quite likely need some attention in that time. So your BDI ought to look out at what service you're getting, among other things. We'll tell you frankly about ours and what we can and can't guarantee doing. We won't make promises we can't keep. Uh, other people might claim more, but when we say our average colour service visit takes around 10 minutes from arriving to getting your picture back, you can bank on it. Our sets and terms are good and we're friendly demonstrators, showroom people, service engineers and everyone at DER. Come in and look us over. Free DER Colour TV home trial. No problems, no pressure. So when you want our man to come and will come and he'll come with whatever set you want, he'll need a PowerPoint and an aerial. If he can spare the set, he'll probably leave it. There's nothing to pay, no contract to sign. You don't need a colour licence for a demonstration. Ask him anything you like. And then he calls back. Simply say yes or no. If it's no, we promise we won't press you to change your mind. We'll simply unplug the set and be away. If it's yes... You can settle things on the spot. Welcome to DER. All rental companies want to give you a demonstration and sign you up. So do we. And we try to be frank and friendly about it as well. Drop in at your local DER showroom and see. Or phone if you'd rather. We're in your telephone directory or yellow pages. In our present, what do you think more? I tell you, it's weird. Because it's uh, in our present, this is a big advert. In our present national crisis, which do you think is more important? The nation or nationalisation? What we, this is vote conservative. What we need is a new kind of government. The conservatives seek a clean majority seek a clear majority at this election to form a new kind of government that puts the country crisis before party differences. Uh. Oh, look. Wimbledon, Wimbledon champions Chris Ever and Jimmy Connors have cancelled their wedding due next month. But friends claimed yesterday that it was their romance was not on the rocks. It's just they're very much still in love. They... I can't really bother to read the rest of it. Ooh. Into. What's this? The standard Skoda comes complete with £115 of extras. I uh, was we, oh, we supposed to say. Skoda now, aren't we? Skoda. Not Skoda. I know why they did that. Apparently, I think I know it's because of the asking, I won't say the name, A-L-E-X-A, or, you know, some kind of thing, and maybe saying Skoda wasn't working. So they, they're they trying to educate the Western world to start after, let's face it, over 50 years of calling it Skoda. Now we're supposed to call it Skoda. And... Sorry, no. They did that with Lidl. I've mentioned this before. They kept having adverts going, Lidl, it's Lidl. Welcome to Lidl. Great place to eat Lidl. They gave up after a few years. Let's call it Lidl. Save a little, save a lot. You know, they've even rhymed it now for their adverts. They don't call it Lidl anymore. They call it Lidl. Because I realised the one thing about English people is we will not change. No matter what you do, what you say, we will not back down from <laughs> pronouncing things correctly. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it will not happen. <laughs> uh. 
So what's next? A modern myth is that Britain is no longer ruled by the old school tie. A study by its government supported national... Okay. Oh, look at this. Finney's just let one off again. Finney's going to bark in a second. Wow, it's got a TV guide. Let's have a look. Not in colour. Not in colour. Not in colour. I remember seeing that. The words not in colour. Blimey. So, BBC One. There was only... Back then, there was BBC One, BBC Two, and ITV. That was it. Three channels. And so you'd have the schools in the early morning. So that was on ITV and BBC One. BBC Two, 6.40 to 7.30, Open University. Ah. Um, a play school. Play school? I thought play school was on, on BBC One. It's on BBC Two. Just see where uh, no East Enders. So BBC One. Pebble Mill at one. I used to watch that when I was a kid. So there was like stuff. BBC One is all schools. It's like engineering, science, science sessions, math workshop, maths workshop. Words and pictures. Blimey. And what was on the for the kids? Play school at four o'clock. Boris the Bold. Don't know that one. Jack and Ori. And there's Yogi's Gang. John Craven's News Round. I used to watch that. And that last, that was okay. That went on for years. A Little Princess, Captain Pugwash, and then the news, 5.45. That was like local news, and then the national news, 6. So this was Wednesday, October the 2nd. And guess what was on the movie? After the news, Carry On Spying, BBC One. I can't remember the last time they put a movie on in the evening. Like it's not a normal movie on a you know it's a normal day. Like like at six o'clock, you know, after after the news and stuff. It's usually sort of TV. I don't know stuff. I suppose it's going to be TV stuff because it's on TV. Okay, and let's have, let's have a look. Oh, look at this sports night nine thirty five. Conti is fighting for the light heavyweight championship of the world. So I don't know if it was live or it was just they were just replaying it back. Let's have a look what was in the early evening on ITV. Going Fundo University Challenge Crossroads is on six thirty five. See I used to watch Crossroads. And then go to bed afterwards when I was, <laughs> blimey, four, five, five or five years old, something like that. Survival, the million dollar wee, what? Seaweed. Coronation Street was on at 70, uh, 7.30. Love Thy Neighbour was on at 8. Um, the Tommy Cooper Hour was on at 10 past 9. And then golf highlights. So BBC Two, what was on in the early evening? Worldwide, Charles as the Frost interview. Where we live, Newcastle. Mm. I think BBC Two was a bit 
a bit more highbrow back then. A bit more, yeah. So, all of this, another advert. So, this is for international, international, the store that f you feel at home with, international. So, it's got a picture of two people. Nice people, nice prices. 17 pence for a quarter of an ib of Scott Virginia ham. 13 pence for a large can of Spiller's Choice Cuts. McVitie's Rich Tea Biscuits. A packet is 12 and a half pence. Or P, as we used to short for it, because pence is a big word for P. Is just, this makes it easier. Sun Silk Hairspray, large, 27p. John West Pilchards in tomato halves, 11p. Ribena, 27p for a bowl, including bottle deposit. See, recycling is not a new thing. We should do recycling here decades and decades and decades ago. Where you used to be able to return a bottle and get paid for it, like a penny or whatever. So it's you'd you could pretty much get the money back. So you'd, that penny would be, I think it was a penny. It might have been half a penny. I, I'm not sure. So it kind of ensured that you'd bring the bottle back. So it would get recycled. And it seems like quite a good idea to do. I mean, no one's going to do that for half a penny. But, you know, £10 a, a bottle. I'd return mine. Cussons or Cussons Imperial Leather Ivory Bath Soap. Special Twin Pack. Why would you need a special soap for twins? Uh, 23p. Heinz Cream of Tomato or Chicken Vegetable and Farmhouse. 9p for a medium can. Oxo Cube r Red Chicken, 12 and a half pence for a pack of 12. And this week's special international Ceylon Tea and Tea Bags, 20 pence for a packet of 72 tea bags, or 6 and a half pence for a quarter of Ib Tea. Loose tea. Wow. Blimey. 4,200 plus for it to be a maintenance man. Roan Consolidated Mines Limited has vacancies for the following categories of maintenance personnel at Kalingvar. An open cast copper mine in Zambia. 4,200 plus. Which. I don't know what. The, I don't know what the annual. Was back then. What the annual wage was. I'm guessing that was a lot more than the annual rate. Um, in 1974. I'm just trying to figure out like the price of a car so you wouldn't be able to buy a car for that but generally the average you could buy a car for an annual annual wage here and the annual the average wage is I think 30 minimum wage is 15 no Minimum wage is, is it, I think it's 15, maybe it's 17, 15 something, 15,000 pound a year. But the average, I think, is about 30. But, you know, which doesn't really make sense if you start including people that are earning huge amounts of money and then people are just earning small amounts. You know, it's, I think they should do, forget the highest earners. Forget the lowest earners, so ignore the part-timers, 
no, don't, I mean, not in life, but just as far as getting the average wage. Don't cl- don't take part time as as part of that, and don't take anyone that earns more than fifty thousand pound a year as part of that either. And then average that lot out, then you're going to get more of a, a proper idea. That's all I'm saying. So these are the jobs. These are jobs. So. Our engineers care, our engineering careers release a lot of potential. One of the worst things in any career is realising halfway through that with the right opportunity and the right encouragement, you could have done a whole lot better. In electricity supply, we're glad to say that things never happen that way. With us, you'll know right from the start that our training, our jobs and the unique nature of our industry can bring out the very best in you and your career progress will prove it. Um, You could start your career in one of the regions of the generating board or with a local area board. Either way, we'll start by sending you to college to study for recognised engineering qualifications. Normally an ONC and then an HNC if you join us with O-levels. A degree if you have an A-level entrance between your spells at co- I don't know what that, but between your spells at college will back the theory you've learnt with formal instructions in some of the best equipped training centres you'll find in any industry. And help you make practical sense of what you earn, learn by giving you real on job experience and the money to match. And when your training's over, you'll find that our industry is big enough and varied enough to give you a career in the kind of engineering you're good at and interested in. It's a training and a career that demands and brings out your best. I'd have loved to have seen adverts like this when I was a kid. Instead, the advert I saw was, change your life, come and work in a chip shop. It will will be the best thing, earn nothing, (laughs) waste two years of your life. Okay, here's the next one. In this job, anything can happen at any time. Right, are you going to guess what this job is? Whatever you do, in the police, okay, let's ruin it. They've mentioned it straight away. Whatever you do in a police, you're never bored by the day routine. Whether you drive a fast patrol car, or a dog handler, or a detective, or a PC on the beat, anything can happen at any time. And you get £1,757 a year starting pay, more in London. Plus free housing, free housing, or a generous rent allowance. If you're physically fit, why was I told? That's ridiculous. If you're physically fit, at least 19 and 5 foot 8 or more, women 5 foot 4, send off today for brochure to police careers. Officer, Home Office, Department, London. I was told you had to be like six foot to be in the police. That's what I was told. Not by a police person, but... I'm five foot nine. Now. And it used to be five foot eight. I'm five foot nine. So I've always been tall enough to be in the police. I could have been a police officer. That would have been quite a good job for me. Because I like helping people. And I also like hurting people. <laughs> oh dear. No, that would have been a good job for me. Um, I actually wanted to be a policeman when I was a kid. And I was told, no. You're too short. I was like, I don't want to be a policeman now. I'm 11. But I said, no. Too, you're not going to be tall enough. And you need to have O-levels. So I didn't even apply, I didn't even try because because I always had a kind of a 
when I was a kid, a very, not so much now, but when I was a kid, right and wrong, I used to tell people off for swearing. Seriously, it was, it was a very um, kind of a law-abiding person back then. Wow. So it just goes to show how much that 4200 a year is for the uh, mine in Zambia if you get paid 1757 a year as a police person. Wow. Here's an advert. Be your own boss at night. Night security officers. New pay rate. An average of £53 plus per week. And Stratford. E15. Wow. So Victoria, which is SW1, Stratford, Tramway Avenue, E15. Fulham, Uxbridge, Wandsworth, Enfield. Securicore. Wow. £53 a week. I mean, I was getting... What was I getting? Um, when I left school, before I went on the YTS, so I was getting like a full rate. My full wages was £60 a week when I very first started working full-time. And then it went down because I was on this youth training scheme that started in September that year. And I turned 16 at that point. So when I was 15, oh yeah, £60 a week. I feel the average wage was about £100 a week. Which would have been five grand a year. And that was in 1986. Yeah, I think five grand a year would have been a good rate for someone my age. Maybe even older. Rent was, my flat was 40 quid a week, so that's probably, you're probably looking at 40 to 50 quid a week for a flat. So yeah, maybe maybe the, you could get more than £100 a week. In fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I was getting more than that, because when I was 18, I had a job in a factory, and I was... I was definitely taking home more around the 600, 550, 600 a month. I was doing overtime, but yeah, I was definitely getting more than 400 pound, um, 100 pound a week doing that job. Yeah, I was. But I was 88 and I went back in 90 and I was getting paid... Yeah, I was getting paid 150 a week. 150, 600, maybe 700 a month. Yeah, it might have been seven, six, between six and 700 a month I was getting for that job. It was a good job actually. I liked it. It was, um, I was on night shift and I got on with all the people I worked with including the supervisors and everything was good and then they changed they moved us to a different they basically built a new a new factory next door gave us two weeks off while they moved all the stuff into the new factory and then basically I went back and after a couple of weeks they decided to change the shifts they had a they had a very skeleton scarf on scarf a skeleton staff on nights and they moved me to do shifts like double shifts so six to two one week two to ten the next or two in the afternoon to ten at night and I did that for a few weeks and then I left because I couldn't handle it I needed the stability of just doing the same hours. Uh, I could have done two till ten. Easily. 
but sit. I could at the time. I couldn't get up in the morning. Well, I could, but I just, it was very difficult. And the night shift was perfect for me. Back then, oh man, I was love. I loved the night shift. I really did. Um, and I did night shift when I was a security guard, but it was different because there was no stimulation. I was just sitting down, waiting for the time to go by. There was no internet, there was no, you know, there wasn't anything to do really. I mean, given that position now, I could make recordings. I could take a portable version of what the recording equipment I've got is. And, you know, a half decent microphone. And I could make podcasts every day. And I could work on the website. And I could do all that stuff. And get paid for it. Just all night long, just do that. For, you know, if I got a shift for 12 hours, I could spend 8 hours doing that. And then go home and go to sleep. And then wake up and have, you know, the time where I don't have to, to I just, yeah, I don't know. It just, that would be ideal. But not all security jobs were like that. Not all security jobs were static as as far as you could just sit there all night because, you know, some you have to walk around the building and, you know, buzz different areas just so they know that you've done your patrol. Uh, other ones you'd have to phone in every hour to, make, to let them know that you was awake. Um, yeah, so it's other ones it just... I did this, uh, worked in a hospital had no lights in there it was an old derelict hospital in London and we had to walk around with a torch patrolling the place because people would get in there and do weird things and I didn't want to do it I'll be honest uh, it's just like I said come on We'd, uh, I, I was happy to do it if someone did it with me I didn't want to walk around the hospital on my own. And I never would. I don't think there's any point that I would ever want to do that. Because literally, it's just so vulnerable. You can't see. You've got a torch. But we're talking about a big, empty hospital. <laughs> Ugh. So, yeah, I didn't. I would. Um, because the people I was working with refused to do it. So I phoned up the office and said, yeah, I won't be doing it. I won't be. I'll be here. But I won't be patrolling because we're supposed to do it in pairs and none of the people here are willing to, to do it. I said, so there, that's, that's how it is. And he said, oh, fair enough. Nothing we can do. If, if they're not, if they're unwilling to do the job, then I'll have a word with them tomorrow. I said, okay. But I'm willing to do it, but I'm not doing it on my own. Because I'm the scaredy cat. He said, you are, aren't you? I said, yes, I am. At least I admit it. Look at this. Home and overseas property. All this luxury for just £3,450. Fully furnished studio apartments. Beautiful private urbanisation. Private swimming pool and gardens. All amenities within walking distance, including golf course. Five minutes from the centre of Torremolinos. Ten minutes from the airport. One minute from the sea. Thirty seconds from a volcano. And a five-year credit facility available. Immediate occupation. Blimey. And there's a picture of... I suppose the outlay of this, you know, of this place. So what is this? This is accommodation. Jobs available in Southern Ontario, Canada. Screw machine setters. Tool makers, centerless grinders, first class machinists, turret lath, lath. Blimey. So you can't do that now. You can't just, this is in Canada. So can't just go to another country like we used to be able to back then lowest fares to australia okay let's have a look let's have a look 
um, and New Zealand. So, or does it say how much? By air, by sea, by jet ship. Ah. Oh, you'll have a full life in the RAF, 1974. We'll train you in a trade. We'll introduce you to new sports, new interests, new places. We'll look after you well, and on top of that, We'll even pay you good money. You need no formal qualifications. And find out a bit more, call or ring, or no, no, call or ring into your local RAF careers information office. Blimey, I wonder how much they used to get. Yeah, I wonder. Right, it's pretty much got to the end of this paper now from October the 2nd, 1974. Oh. The moment of truth is about oh okay, this is say no to Labour's plans for Rick. <laughs> it's another advert. Three pound ninety nine for some shoes. Fashionable styles that won't pinch your feet or your pocket. Super Vanguard. Okay. John Conti has kept his promise. The fight of his life for the triumph of a lifetime. The world lightweight title at Wembley last night. Okay, so they were showing it, weren't they, on the TV. But it was the night before it was shown. So it took him the full 15 rounds of one hell of a fight to master the immensely strong, impressive, brave Jorg Uhumanda of Argentina. But the contrasting picture at the end told a story of how total that mastery became blimey so that was uh, John John Conti's was a definitely a bit of a a hero uh, okay so there's more so it's, it's taken up quite a bit of room that's good oh my, oh that's no, also on the back pages Wow, cool. So that's that's done. That's the whole thing done now. All done. It's all read. Read the whole paper. 1974. You know, I quite enjoyed that. It's, there's a lot of similarities. I know I probably I read out a lot of adverts, but I was interested just in the price changes and... I don't know what kind of adverts were available back then. Ad adverts, but yeah, it was it was quite nice. I quite liked those retro newspapers. I'm gonna look to see if there's any more I can get hold of that I can read. Always interested as well, seeing what was on the telly back then as well, and just the prices of things and what kind of. Sales techniques were being used in adverts. You know, like the trial of a coloured television. Just have it for... It didn't say how long for, did it, in the advert? But that that is the um, the puppy sales technique. And it's basically... It's based on the principle is if someone gives you a puppy for a week two weeks to look after and you know with the thing where you can you can buy the you can buy the puppy if you want but just have it for two weeks you're not going to want to give the puppy back because you'll fall in love with the puppy i'm not saying that everyone would but you know just humane people <laughs> so that is the puppy the puppy dog technique of selling to give someone a TV and then take it back if they don't want it. It's fine, no questions asked. Is uh, and the longer someone has a TV, the longer they're gonna want to keep it. I guess. The I had a similar thing with the Sky dishes when in 1989 I used to I used to, I need a drink of water. I think I've been talking for a while. 
I don't know how long. When did I start talking? Right, it's over an hour. I, yeah, I did this canvassing job. Knocking on people's doors, offering them Sky for free for, I think it was a month, maybe it was longer. So they'd, Sky would come in, put a dish up, they'd list, and they'd have Sky free, Sky TV free for a month. And then if they didn't want it, I'd take it away. If they did want it, they'd just sign up for a contract. And the amount of people that just straight away, nah, you're right, no thanks. Because Sky got such a bad reputation back then. It was, the idea, it wasn't necessarily Sky, the issue was Sky, it was, I think uh, the general public and the newspapers were very kind of dismissive of, in the sense of why on earth would anybody want to pay for more channels? Why would they want to watch that stuff when they've got... Blimey, at the time we had four channels in this country. And it just got a bad press. But I wish I kind of stuck at it. Because, you know, what I'd, if, I'd, if I'd have just thought of it a bit more like with my brain back then... I'd have, I'd have had a meeting and said I want to take an area run and took on the town that I used to live in and that area maybe that whole as much of the area as they'd let me have because they were starting off in London and working their way out so I said okay if I'd have done that I'm not sure I mean they might have already had that area sorted but in the instance that they hadn't I already had canvases that could have done it because that's what I was doing the, that summer. Like literally the summer before that was what I'd been doing. And we got, um, they decided to, to start advertising instead for a while. So that's when I moved to London. But it would only been a few months back. And I could have got a little canvassing team together. And we could have just done that town. And then the next town. And then completely maybe made lots of money I might have made hundreds of pounds oh well yeah a bit late to have an idea like that now isn't it really oh if only I could get a time machine and go back to 1989 yeah there's, there's probably more interesting things I could do with a time machine 1988 that'd be good I don't know that's the thing isn't it what would you do if you only had one trip you could go there you could come back but then if you're not allowed to do anything to change you can't change anything because then that would just change the future which would be part of the reason to do that but it's a little bit like with the end game. No, not the end game. No. Um, okay, I won't say the movie, but there was a Marvel's movie where he was trying to change the past. No, he was trying to change what happened, just happened. Kept going back. Kept going back. Kept going back. And every version of the future, the same thing happens, just a little bit different. And he realised that he couldn't change that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting scene, actually. I won't tell you what movie it's in, because it might spoil the movie. It definitely wasn't the end game, because that was a... Although that was a similar thing, they did go back in time. Yeah, but that was a di that was a different kind of scenario. But yeah, so that's it. I'm going to go now. Thank you for listening. Please remember, Vinny Manili, remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.
relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me, just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, pressed the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation.
and I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice it almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how 
relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you breathe 
breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity, with a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free No 
Noticing that. Your mind. Has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs So deeply. And the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body further and deeper and deeper. No 
noticing the feelings in the back of your neck. feelings in your wrists, muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach
this Notice how relaxed you now feel in the whole of your back. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Comfort increasing. Deeply relaxed. Spread in those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. your elbows, feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. tips of your toes, to your eyes, your fingers, all the way to your lower back. Letting go, really letting go.
peace. Drifting. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Enjoy in a sense of letting go. Even more. Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body, just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy.
not have noticed your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Drifting. Total peace. Go. body
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up. And your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling of positive healing. An energy that spreads through your body like a wave 
of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead. Just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely moving your focus down to your mouth your lips your tongue your teeth and your gums and the whole of your mouth relaxing calm and loose As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. Relaxed and calm. Focus in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose and calm the sides of your neck the right and left side of your neck relaxed and loose and calm back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back and moving either side of your spine right from the top of your back all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gent 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back and into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose they're already feeling calm and that feeling that those muscles the move from your neck into your shoulders feel so soft and gentle so smooth and calm The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just travelling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders all 
which sends that deep healing message into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so deeply relaxed so The comfort spreads all the way into your wrists, your forearms, and your wrists, feeling so heavy. at the same time so light and gentle Focus in now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. attention to the front of your body, so comfortable. to your legs muscles in your thighs, your knees, so muscles and your shins completely
spread to your chest and your stomach. So relaxed. Letting go of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now, from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
hate. Seven. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, we're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes, your eyelids, the 
muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focus in on your eyes. I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now. Ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
Well, you're counting down from ten to one. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? We could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down 10 Nine, eight, seven, six. And just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down so I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. How does your body feel now? Can you notice that the you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily I well, speak for myself here. I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, 
your shins and your calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important you know anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area a thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile and there's the calf muscles of course when I was younger I couldn't see the point in calf muscles it didn't seem to do anything Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. And there's that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course there's the muscles, the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff, it's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and a massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very, it feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. that fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only eight stone it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as in fact my whole legs do my feet feet also go and my toes clap they're so happy really are amazing and I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true legs are amazing your legs deserve not just respect they deserve to relax deeply They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. 
And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, is still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on. There's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost... You know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally. And part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing, 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice 
notice that there are some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them you just need them you require them to just calm down slow down quiet down for now So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude, over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. And more relaxed. Starting with number seven.
as you now notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. More and more relaxed with each number from eight to one, you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers, becoming
out in with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. And this is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety, tension. 
just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. Place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past 
for some reason no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in Is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive, only a positive way. Opening up to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now. as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. This feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, it just feels so nice. such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. Each and every day moving forward you're going to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity 
will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? It feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now. Twenty. Nine. 
routine. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Eight, seven, six, five. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, 
it's kind of expected. You expect, when you listen to my voice, to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. Your focus increases. Which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down. body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body, is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start to drift That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also will happen.
speakers by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me. You give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command your body and your mind to relax deeply and to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, and when you come back again, and you hear me talking, and I'm focusing on a different part of your body. yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting and you're alert again to my voice, focusing on a different part of your body, starts to relax even deeper. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, eventually that drifting continues into sleep. That's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you. Because when you do, and if you do fall asleep, it's so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep. And it feels so nice to relax into your own body and mind as you, f- as you feel that healing energy spreading through you relaxing you so deeply relaxing you so start to focus on your eyes, moving down to your jaw,
chest. Your stomach. Your back. Your spine. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now they almost seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end it's almost as if they just mix together Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focus in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. and observing the back of your neck. Feeling that energy in the back of your neck.
observing your ankles. Being aware of physical sensations in Noticing now your toes on both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes to sin how your entire body feels noticing Letting go Letting go Letting go go letting go letting go I'm going to start now, and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, 
and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and there's a massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massage in the, the back of your neck. 
especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles, and you can let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. Don't worry, it'll still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. 
into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice, and you can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so, so relaxing. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. A 
start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. Starting at the top, starting again where we already be at being, that area at the top in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back and massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connects your front to your back. Just massaging down firmly, but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. Eventually we get to the spine, we can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. We can do that a few times, sometimes people use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down and go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. And now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, I'm going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage. Because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, 
which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time it feels so releasing. This a mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body, and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. Because it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up. And massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging 
the back and the sides of your thighs gently and firmly there's a lot of muscles there it's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body but that's up to you and you can gently stroke the back of your legs where you know opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint it's a very sensitive gentle area And working down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands and fingers digging deep. your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles 
firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet, the bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. And as we move up, I can clean my hands, make them more fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead. If your eyes are closed and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, your chin. Just moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. then moving down again. And then allowing my hands 
hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down to just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well an area that really doesn't get much attention but feels really good when it's massaged just stroking my hands down the sides of your body or just below your arms all the way down to your hips Now, moving to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you, like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side, gently massaging. one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button, I'm going to move around to the other side of you and repeat that. process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. Then going the other way around. There's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs muscles, massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. And moving down to your knees, gently Massaging your knees, sliding down your shins, putting 
pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet. feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just so it's not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish. And then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need to sleep, 
you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply tired. down, the more your mind starts to drift, and you may find that you stop listening to me after a while. there may be background sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment. You may start to just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, maybe traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to move away. sounds and from general day to day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel number that you hear me say and then you blow that candle out too <sighs> so easy 
so simple. Well, we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change. Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. Six. Ninety-seven. 
twenty three. Eighty six.
24. Sixty four. Sixty. Oh. 
58. Candle 57. Fifty-six. Candle fifty four. Candle fifty two. Fifty one. Fifty 
handle.
Seven.
two, twenty two. Seventeen.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed. Allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, oh it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two and it feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset in your mind you're prepared to let go of everything and just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate any 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien, but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally, the most natural thing in the world, to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind, and it is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength, as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. And you may find the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need. What we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. You start to Get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Breathing seems easier and more natural, effortless, as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs, breathing in 
comfort and relaxation. And then just breathe in out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. As you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are, have come to a standstill, or maybe just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and uh, relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed, really is a great healing experience for you, and has so many positive benefits your body, your mind and your life, to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind, even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefit of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, it sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really even more deeply relaxing even more completely letting go of any remaining thoughts or concerns Because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness. 
awareness filling your brain with deep concentrated healing calming relaxing of your brain, feeling so loose and comfortable, so relaxed and peaceful. ever increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. i 
so letting go of everything. I'm going to do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So we're going to start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. like you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, open and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently, but only very gently and very slowly, noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. And I just ask you to gently tense your thighs just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your 
thighs feel right now? Focus to the back of your neck, just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. Only very slowly and very gently, not trying to force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel right now. As we now focus on your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin, maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently. And slowly, if that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, 
pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As we move your attention in your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feel. your mouth, moving it to your left, maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth, and then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth, and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth, always very slowly and very, very gentle, so that you can focus on your wrists, and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion, very Gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very gently and slowly. 
observe your lower back. And that bad part is just above your hips, where your coccyx are. also really does include the sides of your body because those muscles are very much connected as those muscles also move into your hip area connecting to your buttocks the sides of your hips physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. Just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even. physical sensations of your lower back. As we now move your attention chin all the way up to near where your ears are, the whole of your jaw, and you can just, if it's okay to do so, gently Open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and then closing your mouth very gently.
Noticing now your chest area. You don't need to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe. This part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice it. Usually, as you observe.
to your hip area, your buttocks, your groin, those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind. And your mind itself just starts to gradually... It doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling 
stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm. I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings. Just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings of all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling. You know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back the 
the left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips and also moving up into the middle of your back and sometimes like right now actually I want to focus on that part. I want to focus on my buttocks. And then I focused on my, the middle of my back. It almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched. Very gently. But just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back it just seemed to happen the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back comes along that feeling in your chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest and what I notice that I focus on my chest I feel it in my my back my upper back I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing in. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... It feels okay. doesn't feel 
a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. It feels quite nice actually. good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax, it relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, a, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention Behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. to happen. A relax.
relaxation to fill your body maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away Almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind. Just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship and movie space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine 
something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature and even if you can hear background sounds they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. Like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation is filling your body and your mind and as you focus on your mind you can count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear your mind will become slightly just slightly so from 10 down to 9 just a slight movement from 9 down to 8 just another small change in how you feel Eight down 
to seven. That feeling is a, is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now. Feelings of comfort and security and confidence. And that gap becomes wider. Eight down to seven, seven down to six. And when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head suck in the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want sucking them out through your skull and then down to four you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness but space a place full of fresh air a place where you can stretch it's almost as if as you go down to four and three your mind is expanding with this sense Peace and tranquility growing as it moves down to two. When you get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel. It's almost perfect feeling maybe a a sensation that you'd like to keep a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all stay in that that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 And this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. And just count slowly from ten down to one and re-experience these feelings in your mind and when you feel that way in your mind your body copies your mind And that 
that feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. Can, we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort Calmness and deep, deep relaxation become stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. So we're going to do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1 and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself, 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. in your mind and your body. Then when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and Calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight. When I say seven. Six. When I say five. Four. When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself that you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers, 
maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. So I'm going to count from 10 down to 1. get to one, that will be the end of this recording, unless of course you're listening with music, then the music will continue. Ten.
20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have. Leaving through your stomach. Just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather. So surrounding your belly button area, that whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen.
can open your eyes again if you choose or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. And notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focus in on your upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Noticing, and you know, you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus on your forehead. And if you choose, you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well your forehead and your eyes, just that whole area basically, almost as if you were wearing a mask, you know, like a, I don't know, Batman mask or something, or I'm trying to think, <laughs> Zorro or something, you know, the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. And focusing on that area. Because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain, and from your mind, and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, your forehead, or your scalp. So basically, any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain and that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes as I count down again from 20 down to 1 now 20 19 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, the back of your neck and the front. 
front of your neck, the sides of your neck and the throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck, also the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely. Let go. So what I'm going to do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just be sucked out of the top of your head and released into the air almost sucked out into the clouds imagine a big cloud above your head Almost like a whirlpool, and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head and just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. Nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten.
Noticing how you feel. How relaxed and calm you physically and mentally feel right now. How peaceful. It feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed peaceful in your mind relaxed in your body can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything, to be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely. That peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose. To feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind. That you're going to relax. I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it? When you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way, that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax. Relax. You know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, it means more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So, for example, 
we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I want to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you, you might say relax or relax. You know, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax now. I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happening with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't but I wasn't focused on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy like not buzzing but I can kind of 
feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension's been released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself. But I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax in your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally. But you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now. Just say, relax to the back of your neck. And I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders, and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my lower my my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. If you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing. So I'm just going to ask that part to relax. And you can do the same now. Relax your upper back. something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that 
it can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, just needs the attention. Just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body as we've done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids and now back of the neck, top of the back back, the rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing, other parts of your body start to just become looser, I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, you focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe... You can see them in your mind's eye. And just tell your shoulders to relax. Feels nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts the back, the shoulders, the neck. Being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body, 
it's almost hard to separate them from each other. lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds. And the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself, Relax. Without focusing on any particular part of your body. Because when you know that telling your hands to relax. And your hands relax. You tell your eyelids and your eyes, the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax. And they relax. You tell the back of your neck. You tell your upper back to relax. And it relaxes. You tell your shoulders to relax. And they relax. told your hands to relax, they relaxed and they continued to relax. And you told your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows to relax, they relaxed and continued. Hold the back of your neck. Focus on the back of your neck. And told it to relax. It relaxed. And continued to relax. And you told your up back to relax. It relaxed and continued to relax. As with your shoulders, you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. It's that the rest of your body 
has also been listening. And that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes, the relaxation spread to your forehead. Around your face, into your skin, into your jaw. To the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing. Your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. All the way down to your ankles. The tops of your feet. The sides of your feet. And the bottoms of your feet. Relaxing. Into your toes. Each toe. Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, Easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself relax means that you don't need to focus on just one part you can just focus on your entire body word relax and 
and observe those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Loosening and calming and healing every part of your body. Feel Just tell yourself, relax, and observe feeling. Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen, sixteen, Fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve.
seven,
to has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed, everything is calmer, as a count say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will Starting 